Hey everyone and welcome back to Miss Estric Biology and I hope you are having an amazing summer. This video I'm going to be giving you some little insights for anyone that's going to be doing a medicine degree, possibly even if you're doing dentistry, veterinary science and definitely if you're doing any sort of biological sciences degree into what are some of the topics that come up in your first year of university which are either the same or just developed on from a levels so you know which of your notes to keep instead of burning them in some sort of ritual end of a level ceremony or just so you know if you want to get a head start what to have a look over in terms of in your notes or you can check out some of my older videos as well if you didn't know i did a biology degree at the university of nottingham so I've compiled a list of some of the key topics that came up for me. Also, I've had a look online to see what the first year modules are for a range of different universities to get some ideas, what are the most common topics that come up to share them with you so you can get ahead. So number one is cell theories. Now, this seems to be something that comes up every single time. It was the first module in GCSE. It was the first module in A-level. And that's because it is fundamental to living things. Being able to understand the structure and the chemistry of a cell underpins the functions and therefore underpins when things go wrong. So it strongly links to a medicine degree because you need to be able to understand how cells, organisms function healthily to then be able to understand why they might go wrong and to know how certain medicines might be able to treat the issues. Same thing with biological sciences, it's fundamental to living things, knowing the very, very small basics before you build up to look at the entire organism or even ecosystem. So the sorts of things that are really common are recapping about eukaryotic cells, prokaryotic cells, but going into far more detail. So knowing more about the organelles, their structures, the enzymes that are involved, particularly for different types of prokaryotic cells, different types of eukaryotic cells. So fungi, plants, and different animal cells for the eukaryotes and different bacterial cells as well. You might also start to find out a bit more about archaea, which is the third domain, which doesn't really get talked about at A-level. Number two is in particular for biological sciences. I'm not sure it's as likely to come up in medicine, but that's natural selection and evolution. This will absolutely come up if you're doing any biological sciences degree. And I remember the first thing that we did was they tested us to see, did we actually know what natural selection was? We had an introduction lesson, and then the next week we were told we were all starting with a test where we had to write out what natural selection is, and there are five key ideas. Now, this is something, because it traumatized me so much that I felt panicked I didn't know those five, I've really emphasized that in my YouTube videos. I've gone through what are the key steps of natural selection that lead to evolution. So that'd be one to check out. Now, this could still be relevant in medicine because understanding natural selection and evolution could link to the evolution of humans as a species, developments in our immune system, for example, linking it to infectious disease, linking it to antibiotic resistance, which is huge in the field of medicine. Number three is genetics and inheritance. This is gonna be relevant for medicine and biological sciences, definitely. So understanding genetics and inheritance is a key topic. So have a look over the structure of DNA, DNA replication, also then the different types of inheritance, particularly the inheritance of diseases. If you're doing medicine, dentistry, that one would be a good one. Have a look more broadly. During your A-levels, you just learned about the inheritance of monohybrid inheritance, sex-linked conditions, autosomal-linked condition, autosomal linkage, co-dominance, multiple alleles. But now if you're gonna be preparing over the summer, why not look into certain inherited conditions and then find out what type of inheritance is it? Number four is crucial for any degree that is linked to biology, medicine, dentistry, veterinary science, pharmacology, and that is enzymes and kinetic theory. Enzymes, as we know, are biological catalysts. They speed up all of the metabolic processes and reactions inside of organisms. So do a recap on your induced fit model, competitive inhibitors, the tertiary structure of proteins, and perhaps you could have a look at some of the enzymes involved in 
respiration that you didn't have to know for A-level, but could be relevant now for your degree. Or you could look at some of the enzymes inside of key cells or organelles. So things like the enzymes involved in blood glucose control or the enzymes inside of mitochondria. Those are things that could be really relevant for your degree. Now that leads me on nicely to number five, and that is cellular respiration. In A-level, you learn respiration as four stages. You have glycolysis, link reaction, Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. At A-level, at loads of intermediates are left out. If you go on to do anything biology related at university, you'll then have to know most of these intermediates and it gets complex. So here is a head start if you want to start getting ahead and learning it, but you don't have to do that. The best thing you can do is make sure you are absolutely solid in knowing the A-level details for respiration and then you'll be prepared when they build on that when you get onto respiration in your degree. Number six is just for biology and that is photosynthesis. Now, if you're doing medicine, dentistry, zoology, you won't cover that because it's to do with plants and that doesn't come up for you. But if you are taking biology, then photosynthesis, obviously that's a fundamental chemical reaction in plants. So definitely check over that because that will be coming up. Number seven is relevant for all of you and that is anatomy and physiology, which it wasn't called that at A-level, but it probably will be called something similar to that for your degree. So for me, we had two different modules. There was one that was called animal form and function, which kind of linked both the physiology and the anatomy. And then there was another module called physiology and pharmacology, which everyone simplified to phys farm. I actually didn't do that one and I wish I did now, but instead I opted for biological imaging where I did a photography unit specifically focusing on photographing biological images. So in those sorts of units, that is where you'll learn about the organ systems, how they function and how that links to their structure. And that could be literally structural features in terms of the types of types of cell, the structure of the membrane, or it could be their composition in terms of the enzymes they contain and how that affects their physiology, which is things like the chemical reactions and processes that happen in those cells or organs or entire organisms. So for that one, that would involve revising a whole range of different parts of the A-level, including cells, enzymes, digestive system, gas exchange, nervous system, all of those different ideas would clump together into one of those types of modules. And number eight, this is becoming more and more relevant as technology develops, and that is biotechnologies. So knowing about genetics and how that links to a whole range of biotechnologies such as your PCR, genetic fingerprinting, gene therapy, but even possibly nanotechnologies now as well. And whether you're doing dentistry, medicine, biology, that is going to be relevant for you. So look over for AQA topic eight and make sure you are really confident on all of those biotechnologies and maybe have a little read ahead in something like New Scientist to see what is new at the moment because that could well feed into your first model. Modules. So those are my top eight tips of topics to look over, how you can start to extend them to prepare for your first year of university. Now, obviously you deserve a break as well. So please don't spend the whole summer revising, getting ahead, go and do something fun, social, creative, whatever it might be. But when you start to feel like you're ready to get back in touch with education and do a bit of work, that is what I'd recommend that you do. Now, don't forget, I'm going to be doing a whole series on results day and clearing, preparing for university as well. So stick around and I'll have all that help for you coming up very soon.